Yes, mm. um, but very excited to that. Um, a huge thank you to award-winning distillery Coppercraft Spirits. They actually sponsored uh, this segment with free booze, not actually money. But uh, you are the audience is actually getting a drink right now, so we're passing out this can right here, and this is their gin and tonic. So it has their actual gin mixed with tonic water, and I think what kind of makes cocktails, uh, canned cocktails, different from canned wine or canned. Um, uh, beer spirits like malt liquor is they actually have spirits in them so they're taking their gin they're taking their whiskey they're taking their rum and they're mixing that in there so um, really excited about this if any of you want to post about your cocktail <laughs> popping popping noises uh, if any of you guys want to post about your cocktail please use hashtag canned cocktail day we're gonna see if we can get over three posts on that and you can find out more at cannedcocktail.com. So before we move on, I'll talk about a couple of these. New Holland actually has three, three different varieties uh, on the west side of Michigan. They are, uh, they've got the bourbon and cola. We got their, what else we got? Blueberry, gin lemonade. And we got one more right here, which is their Holland Mule. Uh, I love the Gosling um, rum, uh, Dark and Stormy. That is awesome. Uh, this little guy, the um, Rye on Fire from Detroit City Distillery. Teeny tiny guy from out of state. So this is actually 42%. This is going to be a um, uh, old fashioned from Slow and Low. Blake's is doing one, as well as um, the uh, Sellerman's guys are doing one as well. So good stuff. Yay, can cocktail day. More from that uh, as we go on. All right, let's move on to our next segment. Uh, on Monday, so that's today, Leatherby Distillers is launching in Michigan. So Leatherby makes all sorts of great products. They're based out of Chicago. I actually have their best right here. Has anyone had Malort? Yes. 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 Okay. This is the better version of Malort. <laughs> it's very delicious. Do we have one audience member to pop up and can come try this? Just anyone? Not you, Richard. While we're doing that, we'll move on. All right. We got Rob coming down. Ron? This is Besk. Try that. See what you think of that. We'll get his uh, take. It is a uh, Swedish liqueur. So... Anyway, so that is that. So go check that out. They are actually launching at Keesling, Detroit right now. So as soon as you're done with the show, go head downtown to Keesling. Got a kick. He's got a kick. Yeah, it's good. Big hand for Ron, everyone. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our next one. On Tuesday, uh, so tomorrow, Grace Guys Distillery is launching their number two bourbon release. Uh, we, had to, we got to get the number one bourbon, so uh, go check out that. Uh, they are happening out in Grand Rapids from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. If you haven't been to Grace Guys, they just remodeled. It looks amazing. So um, Tuesday, worth a trip out to Grand Rapids. Okay. Um, going off to our fourth segment, we, uh, we are on Friday. Uh, Grace Stash, Gray Stash Gin uh, right here is going to be launching at Rusted Crow Distillery in uh, Dearborn Heights, 6 p.m. to midnight. This is actually the prototype bottle that we got to have, but it is the Rusted Crow Gin with Ackroyd Scottish Bakery's Earl Grey tea. So it's not an aged gin, it's actually a flavored gin with tea. And this is delicious. So I encourage you to check that guy out. Oh yeah, can't wait. Hello to Andrew, things are going well. Um, fifthly, Saturday, uh, September 15th, Cultivated Coffee and Tap House is having their third anniversary party uh, up in Ypsilanti. This will feature some of uh, the best and often limited release beers in the state, and uh, they donate all their profits to charity. So go check that out. Starts at 8 a.m. and goes to late. Finally, last event, Monday, September 17th as well. You'll be watching, no. Yeah, Monday, yeah. You'll be watching Nick Drinks, right? Okay, here we are again. But uh, famed New Orleans bartenders from Cure, they're going to be doing takeover at the Skip. Go check out that. They'll have some Cajun flavor. They'll have a wee bit of Peixote's bitters. Party starts at 7 p.m., goes till 1 a.m. 
So those are all the events for this week in September. Nick Drinks at Night is going to be right back after a few messages. Stay tuned as we sample some fine spirits from Iron Fish Distillery with bartender David Porcaro, as well as one lucky audience member. Cheers, everyone. Hello, and welcome to the Velveteen Lounge Kitchen. I'm Kelly. And I'm Paul. And on our show, we're all about showing that good cocktails can easily be made at home by anyone. We combine cocktails and comedy, along with the occasional boozy music video and visits to fabulous bars throughout the country. We're coming to you three times a week. Mocktail Mondays, a regular cocktail episode Tuesdays, and on Thursdays... Our infamous Liquored Up live broadcast at 7 p.m. Eastern on Facebook. It's quite a party, so you won't want to miss it. See you soon! and you're watching Nick Drinks. Yay! <laughs> so yeah, we'll have, we'll have Nick Fisher a little bit later to talk about. But uh, welcome back to Nick Drinks, where we talk all about things related to booze and cocktail culture. I am your host, Nick Britsky, and now we are going to sample some products. So first off, thank you so much to Sarah, Shara, Sarah <laughs> Anderson. She is the founder and partner in um, Iron Fish Distillery. I am, I am. Shara. <laughs> Um, but what we're also going to do in one second, we're going to bring up an audience member as well as an industry professional, not yet, to taste products in the real world and see what they actually think about it from both sides of the table. Um, but Iron Fish Distillery is actually based out of Thompsonville, Michigan. So kind of here-ish. Yeah, right. Yep. Okay, research. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we're lucky to have Sarah with us today to talk about some of these products. Um, Sarah, you've brought three of your products. I and did. We also have a cocktail for the audience. That's right. So uh, talk about the vodka. All right, I'm happy to do that. This is our Michigan Winter Wheat Vodka. Mm -hmm. It is a heritage style of vodka. What that means in distilling is that it's very cleanly distilled, but it's not charcoal filtered. So you're definitely getting this, uh, the taste of the grain, which in this case is a little bit of sweetness, maybe a little bit of salinity at the back with some caramelization. It's made with uh, winter wheat. Uh, it was uh, grown by another family. This, this wasn't grown on our farm. Our distillery is located on 120 acre farm. We harvest about 80,000 80, pounds of grain annually. So uh, this is a product that's been 
uh, amazing for us. It definitely has its own character mm -hmm. and flavor, it, uh, but it's kind of minds, it, minds its manners when it gets into a cocktail. And when it's, so it's, if it's not filtered, so you're getting a little more of the characteristics. Absolutely. So yeah. I, I like that. That's so great. essentially we talk about terroir a yeah, lot in right. the wine world. So essentially this is the terroir of our region. Um, this vodka was just awarded a gold at the London Spirits Competition oh. in varietal vodka category. Great. So nice. that is that. So speaking of awards, we move yeah. on to the gin. And I this know. actually won a big award, right? Yes, it did. It won uh, actually a couple of big awards, but the largest award it received was uh, Cigar and Spirits Top 5 Gins of the World. Mm -hmm. it, it's a botanical style of gin, or Michigan Woodland Gin. Um, it's made from the base of our vodka. M many gins are made from neutral, gra neutral grain spirits. Ours is actually made from our vodka base. Botanical style, uh, lower in juniper. It has concolor fir, other Michigan botanicals as well little bit of pepper, um, fennel-y types of flavors at the back. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an amazing cocktail gin, just bright and fresh. It's just a real pop, real walk through the Michigan woods. Would you call it a London style or no? Not I would not. No? I'd call like it a American. new style, American style, yeah, okay. new style gin for sure. Nice. All right, so moving on, we got a bourbon. Talk yeah. about this. So we are a two-year-old distillery. So this is bourbon that we brought in from our distillery, brought into our distillery. We talk, clear, we talk very plainly about that on our label. It's something that we feel very, uh, that is an important thing for distilleries to do, saying that we didn't make this from the ground up. But we, when we brought this bourbon in, it's a high rise style of bourbon, we took on a barrel aging program and we've barrel aged bourbons in a bunch of different ways. But this is one of our latest releases. This is actually a, uh, aged in a Caribbean rum cask, wow. 50 year old rum barrel from the Mount Gay Distillery. That's amazing. So, well, thank you so much. Yeah, we're gonna absolutely. bring you up a little bit later to Great. make a cocktail. Good, good, good. And now we're gonna taste your products. All right, good. All right, victims, come on over. So first we have David Porcaro. Sir, cheers. Thank cheers. You for me. And uh, David is actually uh, at uh, Besa Bar uh, in Detroit. Restaurant, yes. Which is going to be launching soon. Next month. Next month. We're going to talk more about that during the interview segment. And we have Richard. Richard, come this way. Lovely. There we go. <laughs> Richard, you're from That's the audience. It. Yes. Have we ever met before? Nope. Perfect. Good. <laughs> All right. So let's start with the sampling. In front of you, you have the three spirits from left to right and uh, grab your vodka and uh, give me a little cheers. Cheers. Definitely get the, uh, the bright kind of fruity notes from the grain. Yep. I'd say it's more like a, <clears throat> like a passion fruit than like a, a citrus per se. Okay, your very trained nose. Richard, what do I'll you I'll leave it up to the experts. <laughs> <laughs> well, w yeah. if, you, if you smelled this, would you, is it a pleasant smell, is it an unpleasant smell? It seems more present than most vodkas, so mm -hmm. that's, that's good. good. All right. It's a little bright, kind of clean nose, not very yeasty. Definitely, you get more notes of the grain than anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they use good grains, clearly, because that does that's taste delicious. good. delicious. Wow. Yeah. That's really great. So the trick about vodka, vodka is supposed to be neutral smell, neutral taste, neutral color, neutral flavor, neutral, neutral, neutral. Right. This, <laughs> this has some guts. It does. So I like it. I appreciate this. Sip it clean. It's lovely. Throw it on some rocks. This would be great. But I think to mix with. This would be yeah. wonderful too. It's it's tasty without being too oily. It, this this has like refreshing yeah. drinks written all over it. You can do so many things. Vodka drinker? <coughs> um, I've drank vodka. This You've is drank good. Vodka I like before? how it uh, <laughs> it basically has a couple different flavors it goes through the whole time you uh, taste it. So. What do you normally drink when you're at home? Um, you know, a lot of times it'll be like a, a, a rum or a bourbon. Okay. If I do that, you know, spirits. All right. Well, let's move on to the gin then. Modern style gin. Yep, modern style gin. Cheers. I like that Cheers. a lot. London Dry has its purposes, but these are always great cocktail gins. Explain a London Dry. London Dry would be, uh, you know, it's set at a certain very specific proof, proof and uh, it has to have at least three components to it, being burdock, coriander, and juniper. And the juniper needs to be the, the kind of forward mm -hmm. note. And it, it has to be like a 92.4 proof, like very, very specific. Mm -hmm. Anything up or down, sideways. So modern gins have started to, with the first hitting the market being Tangeray Malacca research, ah, um, what, what started putting other things like grapefruit yeah. and, and, and other kind of flavor profiles into gin to give it sort of a modern interpretation and flavor to, you know, have let bartenders have fun with gin in different ways because it's just a flavored vodka. So still juniper forward, but less. Ju juniper Pulled is back. part of it, right? but it's not necessarily the prominent note. Okay. This has a little bit of <clears throat> like lavender. Definitely get the juicy body from this. Right, right. 
and one of the things is, you know, when we get a Christmas tree, we get a con color fur specifically because of the smell. Um, we love the smell Christmas of this. Tree. So. Yeah. yeah. I do like the pine kind of like little resinous to it in the back. Yeah. But that bright citrus front mm -hmm. and aromatic and like really juiciness from the, the, the base beer. Yeah, makes Absolutely. it. This really is great. Tasty. I'd sip on yeah. this straight too. This is wonderful. And I need this. I need my snifter. <laughs> I'll, I'll get it later. And you had a you had a your snifter broke too. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about I'll, that I'll later. I'll bring yeah. it out later. All right, last one. We got the uh, bourbon aged in fifty year old rum cast. Insane. Huh. Wow. What did this cost? <laughs> Barrels. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. They let you rent them. Oh, that smells great. <laughs> it doesn't have like the sherry note that a lot of like rums have. Rum aged, rum finished yeah. casks have like they'll have like that kind of sherry oxidative. Right. Definitely smells like whiskey. So this is closer to what you'd be drinking, right? Yeah. Sounds good. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. That is damn smooth. That's good. Oh, that's fun. And the rye is very present. Yep. The right, high rye. Right bill. towards the middle. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. That chewy kind of cereal thing that you feel kind of mm -hmm. happening on your mm -hmm. tongue. Just as it starts to finish and you get yeah. back into Oh, that's just whiskey. Like, All right. <sighs> so this is more in your wheelhouse. Would you buy this? And you can tell the truth. No, this this is very good. All right. Okay. Uh, My favorite whiskey whiskey quote. Um, that feeling you get when the whiskey is is going down, mm -hmm. that burn <laughs> is your soul healing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sarah, can you give us price Cheers. points on these? Yeah. Cheers. Uh, Cheers. The vodka is at uh, 30. So 30 for the vodka. The gin is 34. 34 for the gin. And the rum cast is at 44. 44 That's for the rum cast. Bad. That's very reasonable. Wow. 44 yeah. bucks for this. Wow. I'm, I'm drinking, drinking this whole thing. That's <laughs> like Black Manhattan all mm -hmm. day long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll join you. I don't want to let this go to waste. Good, good. <laughs> so Iron Fish Distillery, you can go check them out. Especially if you are in kind of the uh, lower Traverse City area, um, you can also check out these products. Uh, distribution in the uh, Greater Detroit area. That's right. Yep. All over the state. So you can find this in uh, great liquor stores. If they don't have it, they can order it for you. So remember, if it's little if it's known in fact. little known fact, yeah, if it's in the liquor book, you can actually search Michigan Liquor Book and find a whole selection of everything that you can find. You can go to a guy and say, "Hey, I want Iron Fish Distillery," and they will they will buy it for you in theory. If, if they if, like if they're your guy. Yeah. Otherwise, you find a new guy. Can you find a new guy? <laughs> yeah. So, um, what other, uh, Sarah, give me your other lineup. So, we haven't sampled everything. No, we have a whole, we have this rye vodka, which is super delicious. Mmm, I so like rye vodka. Delicious. So, we have a we rye have vodka. Rum. We have dark rum in the distillery. We have uh, maple bourbon, county port bourbon, imperial stout or bourbon. So, we got a dark rum, hey. we got a light rum, uh, we have a, a bourbon. A rye vodka. A rye vodka. Um, the bourbon was what? What was the other bourbon? Imperial stouted, Imperial bourbon. stouted bourbon. Okay. bourbon. So yeah. Maple syrup barrels, which is a hot stuff. Wonderful. So go check out all those things. You can go to their website to get more information. And that is going to wrap this up. Richard. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Maybe we'll see you in a sec. And um, let's give a big hand to Sarah, <laughs> David, and Richard. Um, next up, we took a field trip last week to BrewDog's new beer hotel in Columbus, Ohio, nice. called the Dog House. Let's take a look. So today we are joined with Pete Tanisha Robinson. Uh, she is the CEO of BrewDog USA here in Columbus, Ohio. Thank you so much for joining yes, us. Yes, thanks for coming. Thank you for bringing beers as well. Absolutely, it's a foregone conclusion. Of course. Uh, talk about uh, the inspiration for this hotel, for, Brew, uh, for Dog House. So BrewDog was founded in 2007 by two dudes and a dog in a garage in Scotland. And so since then we've become the largest craft brewer in Europe. But we just started US operations last year and so we're quite late to the craft beer party in the US. Uh, we, see, we see building the hotel as one of the ways to make our campus the number one bucket list destination for anyone who loves craft beer. Great. And is anyone else doing a beer hotel in the US? So there are other beer hotels out there in the world but this is the world's first beer hotel inside of a brewery. Cool. Very cool. So um, you mentioned Scotland. How did Scotland translate into Columbus, Ohio? So BrewDog has had its eye on global ambition once we really saw the strength of, of the market in Europe. And uh, James flew to Columbus to check out the situation here. Uh, he tweeted, hey Columbus, where should I go get a beer? By the time he got his bag, over 500 people had responded. 
So he called our other co-founder, Martin, and said, hey, Martin, I don't know how we're going to pay for it. I don't know what the plan is. I don't know what we're going to do. But Columbus is the home for the headquarters of BrewDog USA. Wow. That's great. There was a, a fundraising component of this to start BrewDog, or was this for the, the hotel? So growing a brewery uh, with our level of ambition is highly capital intensive. And in the midst of BrewDog's growth, um, banks weren't lending, and so James and Martin were some of the early pioneers of equity crowdfunding, uh, which means that people buy shares in the business. So to date, BrewDog has over 85,000 investors and has raised over $80 million through our program called Equity for Punks. So we know a little bit about crowdfunding, and we felt that the way to test the concept, see if there was enough interest to even build the hotel, we went out on Indiegogo, put up a campaign, and had several thousand investors participate, which is super, super exciting, but it gave us validation that this investment was totally worth it. Sure. Talk a little bit about the stats of the space. So we walk in, this is a massive complex. Um, square footage, uh, do you know how many uh, barrels or gallons of beer you're producing mm -hmm. per yeah. year? Yeah. Um, so we have, we're, we're sitting on our campus, which has a 100,000 square foot brewery, a 12,000 square foot tap room, our current capacity in our brewery is 100,000 barrels. Um, our current production for this year, we think we'll hit about 25 to 27,000 barrels, which we think might be the best craft brewery debut in the US ever, which we're really, really excited about. The hotel has 32 rooms. Eight of those are suites. Some of those suites actually have garage roller doors that open up into the brewery. And then this is also our sour beer brewery, which is 7,000 square feet. We've been here for a little bit. We've talked to the staff. We hear that you're currently sold out. Congratulations. What has been the response of the fans uh, to this space? It's been uh, super, super exciting. Uh, I think we've got some really unique features in our craft beer hotel here at the Dog House. So we have draft beer in each of the rooms. We've got mini fridges within reach of the shower. So you can have a shower beer, which if you've never had a cold beer in a hot shower, it is life changing. And we also have, I would argue the best um, mini fridge uh, or mini bar in a hotel with some really rare, really exciting craft beers that are our favorites from all over the country. If people don't like beer, is there something for people to enjoy here, uh, maybe with their beer, significant others? Absolutely. So this is a dog-friendly hotel, so it's also a great destination for dog lovers. We have a dog park and, um, and tours. We actually have a beer museum, so for people that aren't sure about their relationship with beer, we've got a, a beer museum and conference space so people can understand the history of beer and the history of brew dog. You mentioned you have a sour facility. Yes. Sours are, sours are tough because you're actually trying to add new flavors and um, live yeast, right? Yeah, so sour beers are really funky and weird. Thankfully, we got Richard Kilcullen from Wicked Weed to run our sour program. So he, he knows a little bit about sour beer. Uh, but yeah, so the, the brewery in the hotel is our sour brewery, and we have some exciting beers coming up. Unfortunately, sours take a really long time to make, but we use uh, natural fermentation and wild yeast and all kinds of weird things, which is why they take so long. And the reason it's in a separate facility is because if those kinds of yeasts get into our normal stuff, it's a total disaster. Right. So coming up, we've got a Brett beer, which we're calling Punk v. Funk. So Punk IPA is one of our great uh, headliner beers. And then we're going to do three fruited sours. We're planning apricot, uh, cherry, and huckleberry, which is an Ohio fruit. Fun. Uh, you mentioned some seasonal beers as well, yeah. separate from the sours. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so coming up this fall, there's two I'm super excited about. One is called Lost Lager. So it's a dry hop pilsner, but super approachable. So we've, we're, we have a good reputation for our IPAs that I think pe people are super pumped up about our lager game. And then we have Native Sun, which is a double IPA, which we're really, really excited about to release. It's super citrusy and dry, and we think people are going to love it. Wow. So of all the beers you mentioned, from the, the, the standard, the basics, to the seasonals, to the sours, what do you think is the most difficult of those to make? The sours, for sure, because we're using unpredictable bacteria and yeast to, and, and then throwing it at a barrel to see what happens. So that's definitely a hard one. Do you get to a point where you've made a batch you open it up and you're like, nope, that, that's gross. <laughs> Absolutely. One of our <laughs> yeah. So one of our values at BrewDog is that we are uncompromising. Right. So we do taste panels uh, throughout this, the course of the life of making the beer. And if any beer isn't up to standard, we will dump the tank. Gone. Gone. N nothing. Nothing. It doesn't. Okay. Yeah. 
are you doing anything um, from a sustainability standpoint, uh, either using the spent grain or things like that? So we, we work with local farmers and, and donate our spent grain, and then we're also working on some wastewater and anaerobic digester projects coming up as we increase our volume. Great. So how do people find out more about BrewDog? Just head to BrewDog.com, and they can find their way to uh, making hotel reservations. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. It was lovely. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to head back to the studio. Cheers. We have to do a cheers. <laughs> Thank you so much. Cheers. We're going to head back to the studio. Nick? Thanks, Nick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well done, Nick. Oh, well done. Well done. Well done. Um, I'm Kelly. It. And I'm Paul. And on our show, we're all about show. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tanisha T. Robinson. Uh, Tanisha T. Robinson of uh, BrewDog. Uh, we wish them so much luck in their new venture. Uh, we actually heard that they're sold out for a number of uh, weeks, so which is really exciting. Um, they actually did launch the beer in Michigan a couple months ago, so keep a lookout for Elvis Juice. We actually had a, we have a can over here that's hiding, and uh, it's delicious. It's in beer stores everywhere. Next up, let's make a cocktail, which I think we already got the title going. So yeah, it's good. All right. I'm ready. So special treat for this cocktail uh, segment. Please welcome back Sarah Anderson. Thank you, Sarah thank you, thank Anderson. you. Th very well done, my neck, very well done. Founder uh, and partner at uh, Ironfish Distillery. She's gonna help us make a cocktail. That's right. It's a simple one, but it's a perfect one for fall. It's a cocktail with a story too. So this is our whiskey barrel aged maple syrup, bourbon barrel aged maple syrup. We make this with a fifth generation sugar bush down the road from us. We're taking bourbon barrels down there they're filling them with maple syrup. We're letting the maple syrup rest, taking the maple syrup out, and then we're making maple bourbon. So uh, this is the maple bourbon. So, and then uh, aromatic bitters that we're also making at the distillery. Really? So like wow. I said, yeah. Okay. So like I said, a very, very simple cocktail. So uh, let's build everything here. Okay, you got it. You wanna do two at a time? Yeah, yeah, two at a time. Fancy, so fancy, fancy. two ounces each of our uh, maple barrel uh, finished bourbon. Perfect. Um, Fill a, spill, spill in a little, we gotta add yeah, a little more. It happens. So, um, the uh, maple syrup finished in a bourbon barrel, about a half a teaspoon of that per glass. We don't like drinks that are too sweet. Bar no one likes that. Bar spoon is a that. great measurement. Yeah, no I don't one know if you guys that. use a bar spoon often, but it's, uh, it's great. A lot of cocktails will have that bar spoon as a measurement, which is A couple cool. dashes of the aromatic bitters per cocktail. So this is gonna be like an Angostura type. That's right, exactly. Icing. Icing, icing, a little bit more for each. Oh, thanks, Nick. Uh -huh. Got the assist. <laughs> the assist by Nick. And stir for each. And we're just going to do about six, eight stirs per cocktail. And then to finish the cocktail, we're going to finish them with uh, some very nice high quality sea salt, which makes everything delicious and a couple of orange twists. Now let's talk about salt because... Salt's no joke in cocktails, huh, Nick? Well, I, and you, you, there's this trend to use saline solutions, like That's a salt right. solution. To you, you're using straight up salt. Yeah. What does that add to the cocktail? But we do it all. I mean, salt, I think salt, it, it, salt in cocktails is just like salt in food. It brings out every layer of flavor, right? Okay. It balances sweetness. Mm -hmm. it, it just, it highlights the flavors all around. I think that, you know, I, I guess there's no clearer way to say it than be at exactly what it does in food. Um, it really, it really is an important component. I like salines too. Yep. Because then it's already nice diluted. It's already yeah, in that solution. Yeah, of course. So um, you know, basically similar to a, um, you know, like an IV that you'd get. Yeah, you can exactly. just dump some IV in your thing. <laughs> okay, let's go with that. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> it's medicine, people. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the yeah. salt is fun in here. Now, I know. The salt's a little more prominent. I know. Than I think like a saline, but. It adds almost like, it's almost like a salted caramel, but like a salted it, maple. Exactly. And the, and the way that the uh, bourbon barrel aged maple syrup finishes it mm -hmm. is like, it adds that n little extra smoky element even to the bourbon. It's yep. such a nice little drink. So cheers to fall, everyone. Yeah, cheers to fall. This is great. So the audience got to try this cocktail too, is that correct? Yes. Thoughts? Wonderful. Wonderful. We got head nods, any head shakes? We even got Sarah, who's not a big whiskey drinker, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so tell me about some of the other cocktails that you serve uh, at the distillery. Oh my goodness. Cocktail, all of them. Uh, I want all the recipes, the, exactly. all of the cocktails. Let's, let's do it, Nick. 
<laughs> um, so many great cocktails, and actually we have a great advantage with our cocktail program because we have a number of gardens around the farm, and we're getting oh, cool. great mm -hmm. fresh local ingredients from basically everywhere around our little neighborhood. But one of our cocktails, it has been our celebrity cocktail. It's simple but fantastic, and it was a happy accident. It's made with our Michigan Woodland Gin, jalapeno mm -hmm. simple syrup, fresh lime juice, and cilantro and mint. It's a shaking cocktail. It's oh, called wow. the Wiley Coyote. Very cool. And that cilantro just adds a nicest little flavor, a little bit of heat, a little bit of freshness with that juice, and just yum, yum, yum. Do, do you get the people that say, I don't like cilantro? Uh, yeah. And what do you tell them? I'm sorry, you, I don't know what, no, it's a genetic <laughs> thing. I forgive them, sure. right? Okay. We know but that. But do you not we put it in then? No, uh, we do it without the cilantro if okay, they don't there you go. It. All right. Okay. But yeah, that's one of many, many, many cocktails that we have. And it's just, it's just fun. And actually we're right in now in the process of changing her, our whole menu over for fall, which is one of the greatest times of years. So Perfect. I love well, the, I love the fall cocktails. You guys are going to have to go check out that menu. It's a great menu. Now we have a giveaway for the audience. Do you know Richard Woods, the yes, cocktail guy? Yes, of course I do. You know all the influencers. Look at you. I met you, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're going to give away this book, and we were we were trying to find out who has the most recent birthday in the audience, and I believe it's Benita. <gasps> Come on down, Benita. Yay! Look at you. <laughs> Benita, you're so young. How old are you? <laughs> 35, everyone. <laughs> So, Benita, come on down, give a little wave to the camera. <laughs> um, he is very active on social media, so I want you to tag him in a post. I'm sure he'll, okay. he'll tweet you out to everyone. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Happy belated birthday. Sarah, thank you so much for this. Nick, it was great. You can find all your products in fine liquor stores everywhere. And we are going to go out to a commercial, um, but when uh, we come back, we're going to try, uh, we're going to talk to David Porcaro about all the great things that he's doing. So stay tuned, everyone. Hello, and welcome to the Velveteen Lounge Kitchen. I'm Kelly. And I'm Paul. And on our show, we're all about showing that good cocktails can easily be made at home by anyone. We combine cocktails and comedy, along with the occasional boozy music video and visits to fabulous bars throughout the country. We're coming to you three times a week. Mocktail Mondays, a regular cocktail episode Tuesdays, and on Thursdays... Our infamous Liquored Up live broadcasts at 7 p.m. Eastern on Facebook. It's quite a party, so you won't want to miss it. See you soon!
Welcome back to Nick Drinks, where we talk about all things related to booze and cocktail culture. I'm your host, Nick Britsky, and we welcome back David Porcaro for an interview about his life as a bartender all around <laughs> Michigan. Did I get the name right? A few places. Porcaro. Yes, Porcaro. sir. Porcaro. Porcaro. All right. We got it. So, um, great. Thank you so much for that. Now, you got started in a culinary career. Um, tell me how that happened. Uh, started cooking really young age. I was like six years old and wanting to help my dad like oh my grill. Gosh. Okay. And my 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 chef secret back then, I thought I was such a badass. Garlic powder, garlic powder on the steaks, on the burgers, all of it. You garlic bay? Yep, a little garlic powder. Just started writing my own like recipes by like age seven, creating like I had this version of French toast that I did where I would like literally make a cinnamon and sugar candy on the outside of it with butter and sugar at eight at seven seven oh, at seven. seven okay and and you could bet your if 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 i had had a torch i would be have been bruleeing uh french toast before it was cool i appreciate you uh kind of withholding the, uh, <coughs> trying the trying harsh trying language. sorry yeah. bartender here bartender <laughs> bartender excellent so did you actually go to culinary school or did I did you not. just go into restaurants? No, I, uh, I just started working in restaurants because it was an easy job to get. I started working way too young in restaurants because I had an Italian last name. Ten? Could work at a, doesn't matter, could work at an Italian <laughs> restaurant and, 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 you know, they give you a job and pay you under the table. Oh. I was, uh, when I turned 18, I started cooking because then I could okay. and uh, eventually conned some chef into teaching me how to cook really well and paid me to do it at the same time. It was crazy, so. Very Anthony Bourdain-esque, I like it. It was, yeah, it was, it was, uh, I came up from a busboy to whatever the monster machine I am now. So at one point you said, okay, I'm done with restaurants, I want, or I'm done with chefing, I want to do bartending. No, so it's more like a feeling that you get after you do it for a long time okay. and you have to deal with like uh, crappy uh, restaurant owners. You cut off a finger? And I, uh, nope, uh, but I had some pretty good ones. Um, no, it was uh, uh, somebody opening a bar uh, approached me and thought somebody with a culinary background mm -hmm. would be a good fit for doing craft cocktails. and. Um, I don't know how you feel about it now, but uh, if I had known how treacherous and dark and long this rabbit hole would be, I might not have taken the red pill, I have to tell you. Really? You well, think you would have stayed? I, I don't know that. I mean, I love this job and I love this life, but there's just so much to, to craft bartending and it's such an explosive thing right now. It's like, I feel like a, a, you know, a minnow in a pond with as much stuff as going on right now in Detroit. Like you're just trying to keep up? You're just yeah, trying almost, to? Yeah, okay. pretty much, and, and, and new products dropping all right. the time right. you know that basque that we were sipping on earlier like it's crazy it's yeah. a crazy rabbit hole i mean this week alone we had three launches it's it's crazy do you think bartending or chefing is more challenging so they both have their own unique challenges uh you know back of the house um you know the ability to you know forget and burn things or or, or mess things up uh uh you know has like really harsh consequences when you're working for a crazy chef in front of the house, you can't do that as much, but you're always on stage in front of people and you always have to, even on your worst day, you have to always talk to people. I mean, like there's no escaping from, from, from the, the lovely guests who come in and, and, and make my day because I get to shape their experience. It, it, it's, it's a joy, but like the two have their own unique. And, and, and the pace of bartending is pretty insane sometimes. What do you think is more rewarding? Uh, honestly, I have to go back to cooking, like just <laughs> making, making a dish of something for somebody that's really impressive mm -hmm. to me is more challenging and, and more interesting than, um, you know, making a drink, which to me is very, very, has always come very easy. Sure. Um, but I still get to do it, uh, when I get to t cook for my lovely girlfriend, uh, you know, once or twice a week. In fact, Whatever. it's pretty much the only time I cook these days because opening a new place, but it's tough. It's very, it's very rewarding to make a dish of something for someone that they really appreciate. Well, let's, we're going to get close to that in a second. You first started <laughs> at Oakland Art and Novelty Bartending? Mm-hmm. When they first opened in uh, 2011. And that was where we first met. Yep. And I have to say... This, this dork sitting at my bar dork, this dork. asking me 55 <laughs> questions about every single thing on the menu that you know, was cool or unfamiliar or whatever. Well, I, you're, you're the guy that got me into this. I, I Thank you very yeah. much, sir. That's, so a, that's, that's a, a very... That's why David's here is that's, because... That's, a, yeah. that, that's an honor to yeah. me. Thank you very much. You sparked this curiosity in craft cocktails and craft spirits, and I thank you. It, it, so. was, it, it was a curiosity for me at that time, too, and I feel like we were really literally at that time learning together right. because as, as I was tumbling down this journey, you came along and a couple other people that are now you know in the scene right. around town right. who we know, and, and it was just crazy. It happened so fast. I mean, I was, 
I, honestly, I wasn't that good of a bartender. I was good at making drinks, but I was not very good at like all the other stuff you needed to do. And, and bless them, like Adriana and Jackie and Sandy were so you know patient with me, and I was probably a pain in the ass prima donna because I could make good drinks, but all the rest of it, I was like, no, we're just hanging out and partying, right? right? Like, it's not, <laughs> you well, know, I mean, there's work to do. <laughs> you were such a good teacher, and you, you knew so much. So, all right, from there, you left Oakland Art and Novelty to do other things. Mm -hmm. How did you get to Besa? Um, honestly, apparently, I just I read a good cover letter. I, I found okay. a posting and, and sent it in, and they immediately asked me if I could send a resume. And before I knew what the concept of Besa was and what it meant, um, like, I had gone into my, my interview my first day and my second day before they hired me, and I was just like very adamant about like how strongly and passionate I am about the guest service side of bartending, which I learned over the years. Sandy was one of the best teachers of that. I learned more from him that first year bartending than I have since then. But he inspired me really to you know take that and make that the fuel for my soul when I was working in places that maybe weren't so pleasant sure. with people that didn't always have the same attitudes and, and guidances and morals with bartending that I did. <coughs> and so I just kept going on about that I, I really think that's what got me like because because the concept of basa literally means you know uh, it's an albanian like heritage word mm -hmm. it literally means you know in in my home you know uh it's my guests before me okay and so that's like the theme of the concept and the reason yes yeah. hospitality like the yeah. core like the the basics of hospitality are like so ingrained into this culture these you know these owners of this restaurant you know these albanian mm -hmm. friends and partners and whatever like that's what this means to them, this concept of BESA, yeah. about how to take you know guest service to the next level. Right. And that's where we're going with that. That's crazy. It's awesome. So um, Very lucky. Talk a little about what you want to do there, what you want to accomplish from a drink perspective. So my sort of theme, because the chef is going to be doing some amazing food. I mean, we're not publicizing any of that yet, but it's going to be like really cool, really like... Um, Cool. Cutting edge te kind yeah. of techniques, you, you know, like re re like really innovative mm -hmm. uh, food designs and, and preparations and things like that. So in order to try to like keep up with that, I'm doing ba uh, basically like culinary themed uh, cocktail program with um, components and compounds that are, you know, a little bit prepped here and there, but they definitely all have like undertones of, you know, classics in their in their blood and in their backbones yeah. with uh with like a culinary sort of theme or edge or twist as it were with uh pretty much all of them excellent so it's gonna be a lot of fun well excited for that so we're looking for that in about a month or so uh yeah next it'd be opening out october okay very good october question mark right now but <laughs> <laughs> fingers crossed it's tough yeah. to open a, a place in detroit so, so much goes into it. So we, we have a couple cocktails we're going to look at in a second. Um, when you first concept a cocktail, what, what goes through your mind? Where do you start? Do you start with a spirit? Do you start <coughs> with a concept? Where, where do you go? I usually begin with a component, like something that I want to use. Um, and then I expand that into how do I use that thing? And it, a lot of times starts with the least ingredient in the recipe. Mm. Um, so for example, the one I'm going to try to make for you in a little bit, you know, I wanted a whiskey drink that had a soft, juicy kind of cinnamon undertone to it. So then I went straight to like my favorite classic, which is a, uh, a the Algonquin, okay. the the famous Algonquin hotel, sure. uh, the Algonquin room with the Algonquin table, and then the Algonquin writers round table that like sat around it were the most powerful people in in that period of history because they, you know, the pen like had so much more power than anything, and they they were the media, they were the talking heads of their day, right. which you know is inspiring to me. So. I took that and I made a cinnamon sort of like juice, Love like it. not syrup, but like a soft cinnamon juice, and then infused the whiskey with the pineapple itself. So the pineapple's in the whiskey, the cinnamon's in the juice instead of the juice, and the kind of took it apart and twisted it around, and then this amazing quin quinoa. So like starting from like the inside, basically like the bottom, the the least part. Um, my, one of my favorite components to use, though, always, and in different volumes, I mean, a little bit or a, l a lot goes a long way, like salt in, in, in food, yeah. uh, is Amari. Yeah. Any, any kind of Amari, like, I don't care what it is, they all have a good purpose and a place, uses, they're not married to just, I mean, I've made awesome vodka drinks yeah. with Amaro in them, and, and people are like, whoa, what is this? I'm well, like, that is a perfect segue. So I think before we let you make a cocktail, we're going to have to challenge you to a game. Let's do it. All right, so let's get you behind challenge the Challenge accepted. All right. My poor, my poor snifter. You're gonna have to hold it. Yeah. Uh, 
so what we were doing with this game is we are going to do a blind tasting where he is going to have to guess which Amaro I've poured him. So to do a blind tasting, first thing we, we have to do fold. is a blindfold. Oh dear. And I tried to find the most obnoxious material I could. You could not find like a hood, like an executioner's hood? No, this hood? is like a scarf. <laughs> Good God. I try not to ruin your mohawk. I don't care. It's... There's like dollar tacos down the street. I'm going there after this. <laughs> All right, can you see? Yes. <laughs> you really can? No. <laughs> I was messing with you. All right, can, well, we, how get, I see can we get two glasses up here in a sec? All right, so I have... We're going to do two Amaros. So I have two Amaros here. Audience, don't yell them out. Please don't yell them out. I like a challenge. So we'll pull up two. We're going to start with this one. All right. So this is an easy one. Oh. Thank you, assistant. No pressure now. So this guy right here. All right, audience. Yes. Lovely, yeah. lovely. Okay, people at home. All right. We're going to pour this for our friend David. And let's see if he can guess that Amaro. Is right it, in front of you. Is it Frenette Valet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is Frenette. Hmm. No, it's not Frenette. Hmm. It's not a Verna. I like this one. Oh gosh. Talk it out. What okay, are we tasting? Okay, it's not. It's not Eastern European. Okay. It's probably Italian. I do get like the juicy kind of like grapey notes of of the way that they you got Italian. They produce their. Yeah. Um, mm. uh, do I get a clue? Yes. Um, this is uh, a Mario a Maro Siciliano. Sicil okay, so Sicilian. Yep, that's part of the title. Oh, Siciliano. Oh, I know that one. <laughs> I just had aphasia hit me. I can't think of the name. Starts with an A. Starts with an A. Starts with an A? Yep. All right, nope, draw a blank. Averna. Is it Averna? It that was Averna. the first thing I said, wasn't it? <laughs> 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 All right, let's take do, it away. Let's do one more and then we'll try your cocktail. All right. All right, so we're moving down the alphabet. Gosh. It seemed too obvious. All right, this is a little bit harder. Moving down the alphabet. Yep. That's a good clue. What letters could possibly come after A? Mm. In the look so these are all Michigan based tomorrows. They have to be in the liquor book. Right. Of I'm course. not gonna try to challenge you with something I picked up in you know <laughs> South Africa. It's Scandinavia. No, I know I know this one too, but my um it's got that earthy, like bitter, yep. rich finish. Is it Zucca? Uh, Amaro al Alpino. 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 Product of Italy again. Yeah. Starts with a B. <sighs> it's a great game. We did a good job. This is a great game. You, 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 <laughs> you did get me. Oh, Brulio! Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that was on my list of things I requested from Antoine the other day, too, and he didn't bring that one. Antoine. All right, Antoine. so we got a couple minutes. Let's make a cocktail. I love it. So, yeah, like I said before, I took and literally infused uh, rye whiskey, two different ones. The uh, Journeyman Rye Whiskey, um, great company that I uh, represent here and there on the side mm -hmm. of different events that yeah. you've seen me at. And then I also brought the uh, Keiko's uh, Fine Wine and Spirits uh, single barrel bottling of their Knob Creek. Uh, and by the way, speaking of uh, Journeyman, Ooh, I we forgot I brought you a present. <gasps> wow, these are super cool. Yeah, I thought you would have fun with those. Tasting things. So these are fantastic. Battles. So I uh, fused the, uh, like I said, it, like a special kind of technique that I used. I fused the, uh, the rye whiskey with the pineapple it's really tricky. I mean, it's literally pineapple whiskey. About two ounces of that for each one. Okay. This stuff is good. Here, you should try it. Lovely. This one turned out really good. This one is um, a little spicy, but that one is big. I mean, the 115 proof rye. All right, we got about 30 then seconds, this, sir, uh, to put you on the spot. This quin quinoa that uh, I'm a huge fan of. It's from Corsica, um, available at finer liquor stores. And then the uh, the cinnamon juice that uh, I mentioned before that I really want you to try. Lovely. 
It is literally the uh, texture and uh, thickness of juice, but Ooh. it is mm. very vibrant. That's super fun. Very oh vibrant gosh. cinnamon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not syrup. So you can you can use a bunch of it and make a drink really yeah. refreshing. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna dirty it up this one because we're out of time. Yeah, no, you're doing good. Let's give a good clap. <laughs> Woo! Excellent. I love cocktail shake claps. Oh my gosh, look at that! The double pour, beautiful. All right, we'll do a quick cheers. Salute, sir. I'll take the. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you for coming in. Mmm. Oh, that froth. Oh, oh my, my God, God. Is that not delightful? Oh, that's so good. Did I see why I told you I wanted to do this? Yeah. And the complexity, the earthiness, the lovely. The riffness, so the brightness, yeah. the juiciness, that little bit of cinnamon, this stuff, Perfect. the star of the show, but it's in the background. Excellent. Thank you so much. It's the lish of the show, Woo! basically. So thank you so much for joining us this episode. We are back next week with the CEO and CFO of North Peak Brewing. We're going to be sampling and discussing oh, cool. their MSU and U of M beers. So everyone, see you next week. Cheers. Yay. Thank you.